Hi guys and welcome to the Tech FAQ series. In this episode we're going to be talking about whether ultrawide monitors are the best of the best for gaming or if a single monitor or even multi-monitor setup, especially 16x9, uh, is a better option for you to go with. Now as with all Tech FAQ videos, it's going to start with my thoughts, opinions and experiences on the topic and then throw it over to you guys in the viewer submissions where I collected them from Twitter. So make sure if you want to be a part of these videos, follow me on Twitter for when I ask the next question and you can be a part of this too. So my experience with monitors over the last say six years that I've been doing YouTube tech reviewing um, has been pretty well versed. I've taken a look at the 240Hz 1080p monitors from the likes of Asus and AOC and actually ViewSonic too um, all the way to you know even the, the budget of most budget monitors that you can get. So it's a fair range and also in the ultra wide category it's pretty similar in the range too. I've taken a look at the original Acer X34 Predator uh, and the, it's six Accessors and things like that, all the way down to the 2560 by 1080 uh, ones that are uh, from people like LG, uh, which are actually really nice too. Now in this video, I'm mostly going to be focusing on uh, 16 by 9 resolutions versus 21 by 9 resolutions as the sort of comparison here. Now, of course, you can get in the 16x9 resolution category multi-monitor setups, for example, which, uh, as uh, MacTX pointed out uh, in a tweet that uh, I don't think is in this, but either way, is mostly confined to stuff like flight simulators and racing sims as a, you know, wraparound display. Not many people are, are kind of using multi-monitor displays, although if you are, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to see that or hit me up with a picture on Twitter too. But uh, my experience with 16x9, no matter which resolution you pick, is that generally Generally speaking, the gameplay experience is pretty similar. Despite what a lot of companies and manufacturers will like you to believe, depending on what resolution you have, doesn't really matter what you see on the screen. If you're running a 1080p monitor and then immediately switch it out to a 1440p or a 4K monitor, generally speaking, you don't get to see any more of the world around you, you just see it in better detail. Now that's not a bad thing, 1440p is a beautiful resolution and 4K is incredibly crisp. So if you have those monitors, you know, there's no, uh, there's no bad, uh, you know, badness there for you. Uh, they're still very nice to play with, but of course, you don't generally get to see much more of the uh, game world. With 21 by 9 though, while support is a little bit limited and you'll often see a lot of cutscenes with black bars, you do in game 99% of the time get to see more of the world. This can be a great advantage and even sometimes a competitive advantage in say first person shooter games or even stuff like Rocket League where just having a bit of extra positional awareness and surrounding awareness gives you just that little bit of an edge over a lot of your other teammates who are likely rocking 16x9 monitors. Now of course there are some drawbacks to ultrawides too. You often have a lot less panel variety in the ultrawides where you generally speaking have either IPS, MVA or TN and generally speaking my at least experience anyway has been that the MVA panels are by far the most common where you still get pretty nice viewing angles. You obviously get the very high refresh rates. For example, the 2560 by 1080 35 inch AOC monitor that I looked at not too long ago, that's a 200 Hertz G. Uh, I should think that one's a free sync panel, but um, you can get a G sync version as well. So uh, there, you know, that's a really nice and very cool offering, although the pixel density isn't that great. But either way, you do still get stuff like ghosting on those panels. You do obviously get not quite perfect color accuracy and viewing angles compared to an IPS. And when you get IPS panels, you often get lower refresh rates and you definitely often get a, a higher response times as well. With 16 by nine monitors, however, you get a lot more versatility. You obviously get up to 240 Hertz. You get a lot more versatility in say, you want a G-Sync or a FreeSync panel option. You also get, as I said, more panel options just in the types as well. So if you want a really nice IPS display, you can go with something like the Asus PG279Q, which is a 165 Hertz IPS display. And while the input uh, latency isn't our uh, the input lag isn't as you know quick as you might like from say a TN the PG278Q uh, it's still you know pretty decent and a very nice gaming experience. Of course the other thing to mention is that I'm mostly talking about PC gaming here if you're a console gamer and you're playing with your new Xbox One X at 4k for example uh, an ultra wide just isn't going to be supported it's not something that at least at the time of filming they are you know intending on working on at least as far as I know so if you're planning on picking up a new monitor for your console, stick with 16 by 9 as that's what they support. But that's enough from me, let's hear from you guys. 
Now the first answer I got was from Phil who actually met an overclocker so hi to you and hi to Cam as well hope you guys are doing good. Um, he says that he plays on a 49 inch TV but would love to get an ultra wide if he could. Moosey's in the camp of a 16 by 9 and a 21 by 9 display with a 21 by 9 primarily for gaming and also paging Lionheart who's recently bought a new uh, Asus I think ultra wide which uh, is pretty nice a pretty nice one uh, and has his uh, 21 by 9 monitor at the bottom with then a 16 by 9 up the top uh, if he wants to record his gameplay and stuff like that. And as he helpfully points out, the multi-monitor master race is kind of where it's at. Ish sits in the 16 by 9 camp unless you're going for a racing sim or a flight sim, but generally speaking, 16 by 9 is where it's at for him. And MacTX uses actually a combination of a 21 by 9 and a 16 by 10 monitor, uh, so that's pretty awesome and a pretty nice combo too. And good old Nathan says he has his nice new LG Ultrawide as he actually to just return his AOC one so that's what he'd stick with he prefers a flat panel ultra wide for uh, kind of more accurate design work and stuff like that but it's still pretty nice to game on I think the overall consensus is that generally speaking ultra wides do provide a different gaming experience and often can land a competitive advantage in some cases but for the most part the majority of people will still be rocking a 16 by 9 or even sometimes 16 by 10 display so it just kind of depends what your budget really offers you is especially on the ultra wide side they can be a little bit more expensive than even relatively comparable 16 by 9 monitors. Personally I actually rock a combination of all of them. I have a multi-monitor setup for my main desk which has three 1080p displays. I then also have a second desk right next to it with an ultra wide that is specifically for gaming when I actually kind of fancy using that one and then I also have a 4k display uh, 16 by 9 for testing as well. So for me it's uh, a bit of everything. But enough about me I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you a 16 16 by 9 Master Race or are you a 21 by 9 Master Race user? Let me know in the comments down below what you prefer, what you have and all that sort of stuff. If you want to be part of the next uh, Tech FAQs video then make sure you follow me on Twitter at TechTeamRB as I ask these questions every now and again and uh, obviously you can get your chance to reply to them and be featured in the video next time. Otherwise, thank you to the guys who did uh, answer the call on Twitter, and otherwise, that's pretty much it. There's some videos over here for you to check out. Feel free to take a look at the rest of the Tech FAQ series if you haven't already. There's obviously, if you want to support the videos, links in the description down below. There's Patreon if you want to support me directly, or if you're buying from Amazon or Overclockers UK, you can also use those links to also support the channel, help me make these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and now Saturday basis. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel, and otherwise, we'll see you all in the next video.